Russia is preparing for a long and protracted war. The term long war is also applied by our top political leadership to what is happening today in geopolitics, geoeconomics, and, in particular, in military operations. Here's how Kiryanko said it in June 23. To quote, one has to realize that this war will be the longest. First, the military operation will be over. All the tasks set by the president will be accomplished. We will definitely win. What's next is economic warfare and trying to sway us. They won't succeed, but they'll keep trying. But the information and psychological war will be the longest, because the fight for the minds of the younger generation will be the longest, Kiryenko said at the Festival of the Russian Movement of Children and Youth Movement of the First. Today, we're going to run examples of how to. How our country is establishing new trade routes to protect itself from Western countries. We are creating a full-fledged intra-Eurasian transportation network, developing our engine and turbine industry, automobile manufacturing, and building large-scale projects in the processing industry and agriculture. But first things first, we recommend watching to the end so that you realize the full scale of the work being done in our country. One of the main results of last year was a sharp increase in rail freight turnover from Russia to China. The construction of new roads and border crossings underway in eastern Russia today go far beyond the mere expansion of the Trans-Siberian Railway and BM and have implications for Eurasia as a whole, especially since Moscow's efforts are supported by its partners Pabriks and Chas. At a meeting with Vladimir Putin, Oleg Belazarov, head of Russian Railways, said, quote, A very important issue is the development of transportation corridors. All corridors give an increase. East plus 5%, overall exports plus 7%, with transportation from China standing out. You have pointed out that there will be an increase in trade with China of over $200 billion. We see this in the volume of traffic. End quote. In general, the growth of trade turnover between Russia and China has long demonstrated the need to expand the capacity of railroad routes. This goal was set back in the mid-2010s. But at that time, when Russia's main foreign trade interests lay in Europe, the Asian direction seemed to be of secondary importance. In addition, in the former era of globalization, the main flow of cargo from China to Russia was by sea through the Suez Canal and European hubs, not by rail. Everything changed after. The start of the military operation and the imposition of anti-Russian sanctions by the European Union. Internal transportation connectivity via overland routes has proven critical for trade across the continent of Eurasia, with railroads being the main tool for this. In the last two years, Russia's railroad network has been rapidly developing towards the east. The two most important highways, BM and Transib, fully justify the huge funds spent on their construction since the times of Imperial Russia. The land route to China, based on the BM and Trans-Siberian Railway, the Trans-Siberian became the key artery of Russian foreign trade. However, further growth in freight transportation is constrained by a number of objective limitations. Russia is overcoming them together with all its neighbors in the east by expanding its railway network. At present, Russia's railroad communication with China is carried out along five main routes. These are transit through Kazakhstan, transit through Mongolia, crossing into China at Zabaykalsk, branching off the Trans-Siberian, railroad bridge over the Amur at the Nizhnyaninsky Atungian Crossing, opened in spring 2022, crossing at Ushuriysk near the eastern end of the Trans-Siberian. The launch of the bridge across the Amur River immediately increased cargo turnover in this direction fivefold. The head of the Russian Direct Investment Fund estimates this direction at five times. Will account for 10% of the total Russian Chinese cargo turnover. To this, we can also add the crossing from Russian Blagovestchensk to the Chinese side of the Amur River to the city of Heha. There, a highway bridge over the river was opened in May 22. Both sides of the border are approached by railroad tracks, so this border crossing point has already become very important in cargo transportation between the two countries. The possibilities of expanding the transit of Chinese cargo through Kazakhstan were exhausted back in 2021, when more than 15,000 trains were sent from China to Kazakhstan and further to Russia and Europe. Increasing the capacity of alternative rail routes is of paramount importance. As a result, the modernization of BM and Transib became one of the country's key infrastructure projects. But we are talking not only about the expansion of highways to Russian Far Eastern ports, but also about the beginning of the formation of branch lines from these highways, including those outside our country. In other words, the creation of a full-fledged intra-Eurasian transportation network. It will enable global connectivity of the entire continent via land routes. The capacity of the railroad border crossing in Zabaykalsk is currently being expanded and will be increased to 32 pairs of trains per day. A second railroad border crossing to China is planned to be built in the eastern settlement of Starotsura Hechui. There are also plans to modernize the solovyevsk border crossing to Mongolia, which will create another transit route to China through that country. country. Once again on the agenda is the construction of the Hewlin Timber Plant Railroad in Primorsky Krai. 
it may be in demand for those Chinese cargoes to be shipped by Northern Sea Route. The Amur region also plans to reopen the Zalindamok border crossing. Zalinda is connected to the Trans Sib by the Skavardino Junction Station, which in turn is docked with the BM. Increased supplies of Russian products to China make us think not only about modernization of old routes, but also about laying completely new ones. In October 2023, Russia announced plans to build two new railroads to China. One of them will pass from the city of Kizil to Mongolia, where it will split into two parts. The eastern branch will go to Erlian and the western branch to Yurumki. The second will run from Biaskin and Altai Krai and also to Yurumki. Specialists say that this project is comparable in scale to BM, but the time frame for implementation is much shorter. The construction of these highways is included in the plan of implementation of the strategy of socio-economic development of the Siberian Federal District until 2035. China has already done much of the work to build its section of the Biaskirumki line. Wang Wen, executive dean of the Chunying Institute of Financial Studies at the People's University of China, says the new railroad will significantly contribute to the regional development of Russia and China. Now the center of gravity of the Russian economy is in the west of Eurasia, the economic center of gravity of China is in the east of the continent. The railroad will play a critical role in rebalancing the economic development of both countries. In other words, the west of China and the east of Russia will get an additional impetus for development thanks to the new railroad links. Not only China and Russia are actively building railroads on this route. For example, preparations are underway to build a road from northeastern Kazakhstan through the territory of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, China, to northwestern Mongolia. In addition, back in 2022, the deputy head of Russian Railways said that we are working with Kazakh partners on the project of a new railroad line Iagazbakhti with a new checkpoint on the Kazakh-Chinese border. And with Mongolia, the issues of reconstruction of the Solovyevsk chebalsan line are being worked out, as well as the issues of construction and provision of new literature and from there the construction of a new line to the Mongolian-Chinese border. In September 2023, Iranian Railways head Main Salihi said Iran is preparing the groundwork for a jump in rail freight traffic to China. Rail transit is planned to be routed through the Sarak's border point on the iran turkmenia border. Undoubtedly, this leap will also be secured after the completion of another key railroad route in this region, the resh Tastra corridor between Azerbaijan and Iran. The construction of this branch is expected to be completed soon, the section will become the final fragment of the North-South International Transportation Corridor. Cooperation between Russia and China in the development of the railroad network clearly demonstrates the degree of economic rapprochement between Moscow and Beijing. While it was mainly about the transit of Chinese goods to Europe, latitudinal railroads were developed. But now that denser integration of the economies of the two countries is on the agenda, it has become necessary to supplement the latitudinal strings with a denser network. Inclusion of other BRICS and SEO member countries in these processes further strengthens Russia's geopolitical position. The large-scale railway network being created confirms Russia's status as an integration center of Eurasia. Now let's turn to the Russian economy. Today, our country is operating in an environment with two significant constraints. The first is the most extensive sanctions, the number of which is already about 15,000, and the second conduct of the largest scale operation since the Great Patriotic War. As Vladimir Putin said, quote, we will not engage in militarization of the country and militarization. Of the economy. The fact that the president's words were not spoken out of thin air is proved by our reviews, where almost every week construction is launched or large-scale projects are put into operation with the epithets, for the first time, the largest in the world, unique. That's all that will lead us to victory in the long war. Here are a few examples of what has been discovered recently. Engines and Tabo Machinery A new building was opened at the Kuznetsovo DK. This new prototype machining building on the management site represents a significant quantity accomplishments. With the use of modern digital technologies such as digital twins, the development cycle of the engine has been accelerated. In addition, the construction of two new buildings, the machining building and the OKB building, as well as work on the metallurgical building, create the necessary conditions for production and product research at the management site. Key parts for prototype products, including large size parts, supports, turbine blades and tunnels, are manufactured in the new building of the pilot production facility of PJSC ODK Kuznetsov. Bone cheese. The new equipment allows to ensure high accuracy and quality of manufactured parts. In addition, the housing is equipped with a system for applying a ceramic coating to the turbine blades, which provides protection against high temperatures. Or here, Power Machines has produced the first mass-produced high-capacity gas turbine, called GTE-170, complete with generator and HRSG. 
The equipment was ordered for Niznikansky SCHBP. The project to create an import independent gas turbine production facility is being implemented by the company with the support of the Russian Ministry of Industry and Trade. The total investment of power machines in the project is 25 billion rubles. Of these, 6.8 billion rubles for Neokras were subsidized by the state. As previously reported, within the framework of the project the Gas Turbine Design Bureau was recreated, design documentation was developed, a set of MPD, production of assemblies was set up, and the technology of manufacturing combustion chamber parts and assemblies was mastered. The turbine consists of more than 10,000 parts. The project involves three production sites of the Leningrad Metalworks. In parallel, power machines are working on the development of a gas turbine of the GT-65 type. Now let's see what we have in the automobile industry. Aftavaz has launched the 1.80 VO engine with Variator. They have resumed production of these engines. The engine was given the name 1.80 VO because of the large amount of design changes. The power of the unit has not changed and is 122 horsepower. In December, Aftavaz released a batch of 25 lot of Esta cars with 1.8L and Variator for factory use. Series production of the engines began in January with a gradual increase in volume, and at the end of 2024. Year production cars with a 1.8 engine and a 6-speed manual transmission. According to the auto expert, Aftavaz managed to find new suppliers for many powertrain components from injectors to timing belt. There are 25 new parts. The pistons are now grease-free. The cylinder block has additional stiffening ribs and granny mounts for the drive shaft promoter bracket. The crankcase pan now has anti-sump ribs. The pallet is adapted for the connection of an automatic transmission. Other innovations include fuel injectors with 30% more performance and more. Let's move on. A test assembly of Ural cars was launched at the former Volvo plant in Kaluga. On December 8th, a test launch of the assembly line for these vehicles with modernized 6x4 chassis took place on the premises seized from Volvo. Now let's move on to large-scale projects in the processing industry and agriculture. A new seed complex was opened in Tatarstan. It opened near the village of Yuziak in the Tayuliakinsky district. The facility with a capacity of 10 tons per hour will produce seeds of azim and spring wheat, peas, and other crops. On average, the organization plans to receive 25,000 tons of seeds per year. The plant is equipped with high-tech equipment, with the help of which multi-stage cleaning and calibration of grain and its treatment with plant protection agents will be carried out. The sequel follows. Modernization of the Balakovo oil extraction plant was completed. Now it will process up to 2,400 tons of sunflower per day. The annual volume of processing will be up to 800,000 tons of seed. A new grain drying complex with a capacity of 50 tons of oil seeds per hour was put into operation to ensure uninterrupted supply of raw materials to the enterprise. A new electrical substation, cooling towers, a new parking lot for grain trucks, internal and access roads were repaired. Well, what's without them? Polymers? Construction of an olefin production and processing complex was launched in Omsk. The implementation of this project will make it possible to meet the needs of the Russian market for scarce chemical products, as well as to provide raw materials to the existing enterprises of the Titan Group for the production of more advanced products. Customers will include the chemical, microelectronic, perfume and cosmetics, pharmaceutical, textile, and automotive industries. Well, and another mega-construction Amur gas chemical complex. During the 2023 navigation window, 162 pieces of key process equipment for pyrolysis and polymerization units were delivered. The largest this year were three ethylene polymerization reactors. Process units are used to produce polyethylene by the gas method. The weight of one reactor is 558 tons. All cargoes were delivered from the berth on the Z River to the construction site. 108 units of large capacity equipment were installed. Completed. Construction of pre-commissioning work at the main power facility of a Mirsky MCC under the 500 kilowatt station. During the year, construction of facilities providing infrastructure for the future complex was underway, including a cryogenic air separation station, a surface water intake on the Zaya River, a water treatment plant, and integrated treatment facilities. Construction of gas distribution networks, storage facilities and repair and mechanical production was also in full swing. More than 10,000 people and about 400 units of equipment were involved in the construction of the facilities. The construction of the first residential complex designed for the employees of the AGCC operating team was completed. Preparation of apartments for occupancy is underway. The second LCD is halfway done.